And welcome back to the show, Mr. What Presents today, Friday, 23rd of June, getting really close to the 4th of July, traditional official opening date of the San Francisco Mime Troupe. And today with us, Michael J. Sullivan. Hey. Thank you so much for coming to the show. Well, thanks uh, for having me. I'm a huge fan of uh, the Mime Troupe. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I uh, can't wait to hear a little bit more about what this year's is bringing us. You're no, not, not only uh, a producer, a performer, typically with the troupe, but you're also the main playwright, yeah. a writer. Yeah, it's a lot to do. Well, you know, the Mind Troop is a collective. Mm -hmm. So we have, instead of our artistic director, you know, some people used to say that the, the uh, last real absolute dictatorship on earth was that of the artistic director. Mm -hmm. So the Mime Troupe, is, uh, we decided uh, back in the 70s instead to be more democratic. So the choices that are made by normally by an artistic director are voted on in endless meetings by the collective. But the uh, actual writing, the, the, the wording, is yeah. that also completely uh, collectively uh, put together or do you have like the, the loneliness of the long distance writer uh, to deal with? <laughs> Yeah, there, uh, there's this idea sometimes that, you know, collectives, that means you have to do everything, mm -hmm. you know. Everybody writes, everybody directs, everybody does stuff. And that really the reason that the Mime Troops Collective has lasted so long is by us successfully delegating responsibility. Mm -hmm. So we'll say, well, this person is going to design costumes, this person is going to do sets. Mm -hmm. I'm the resident playwright. So I write the show, someone else designs it, somebody else directs it, sometimes different people, sometimes the designers also direct. Mm -hmm. But it is all about delegating the responsibility rather than trying to everybody to do everything. That's crazy making it impossible. Right. And uh, uh, this year, uh, the subject matter is immigration. Yes. Tell us a little bit more about walls uh, while I pull up the, uh, the flyer for the show and uh, tell why, uh, where it comes from and why people should go see it this year. Well, what I wanted to do with walls uh, and what the troop wanted to do was really talk about how we treat as a nation, how we treat and have always treated those people that come here. And so it's always a, there's a period where it's like, oh, we want all the immigrants we want. Oh, we don't want the immigrants. The old immigrants hate the new immigrants. How do we treat those people that create this country? Um, and so what I wanted to do was deal with different types of immigrants. So the story is really the story of three immigrants and one ICE officer. Um, there's a woman who has come into the country from uh, Mexico for, for work. There's a, a a uh, man who's from Somalia who came, his family, his father worked for the U.S. Embassy in Mogadishu mm -hmm. and uh, once the West kind of went to war with Somalia for a while, he moved here and it's how, his, how he's dealing with owning a corner store and as a Somali, how he's seen as a terrorist. Every time something happens, everybody kind of turns on him in the neighborhood and do his customers look at him strange. The difficulty that he has, even as a more uh, uh, entrepreneurial class immigrant, his struggles. And then there's another person who is a, an Irish American. Well, she's Irish. Uh, and she came over from Ireland and she's actually an ICE agent. And so how does she see these other immigrants as a person who herself is an immigrant? How does she feel about the other immigrants? Oh, and the woman who comes up from Mexico for just to have a job, she is in a relationship with an ICE agent who is trying mm -hmm. to figure out how to keep her safe in this particular time of, of ICE raids and mm -hmm. immigrant hatred. So there's a farce quality to it like there is with all mime trip shows because again, uh, we don't do silent mime. It's all political musical comedy. It's what I say, it's, it's just like seeing a Broadway show, only it has a point. And uh, so the shows are always, have, we use comedy mm -hmm. and music and physical comedy and all of this to kind of crack the audience's brains open to get a bit so that we can get our political message and working class analysis in there. And, uh, and it's always a hoot, always a great time in the sunny San Francisco parks through the summer. Uh, here's a, a picture of some friends of mine uh, a couple years ago. Uh, and you can tell, you know, the park is full. Uh, you guys play every weekend. Uh, it is highly musical, vocal entertainment for the entire family. This is the, the Dolores Park opening mm -hmm. uh, on 4th of July. This year, 4th of July is on a Tuesday, but that doesn't change anything to the tradition, correct? Oh, we'll be there. Yeah, we, um, I mean, that's just been the tradition of trying to say, well, what is... Uh, the Mime Troop always wanted to play on 4th of July, and that's been our tradition, to say, well, what is patriotism? I mean, besides the idea that patriotism is the idea that your country's better just because you were born there. But also, you know, it's a time for 
uh, us to kind of get together as a community mm -hmm. and say, well, what do we want our culture to stand for? What do we want our country to stand for? How do we want to take uh, this, this particular day and examine where we are as a nation and laugh at some stuff, think about stuff, look at our community in a different way and uh, you know, kind of come together as an activist community. So, you know, we play from 4th of July through till uh, Labor Day, and we play in different parks all over the Bay Area. We'll play San Francisco, Berkeley, Marin, Santa Cruz, San Jose, uh, pretty much everywhere that we can, and the shows are free. And the main reason we do free shows is that our shows are a working class analysis of the issues that are impacting the working class, and we want to make sure that the working class can see the shows, because even a $35 ticket $25 ticket. I mean, these are, this is tough nowadays. And we want to make sure that people feel like this is a place for them. A place that is, we are operating in our, our commons, in the parks. And we want people to feel like this is our park, ours, the people's. And this is where we can get together in this kind of forum and discuss these issues. And it should be entertaining, and it should be fun, and it should be musical, but it also should be activating. And that's what we want to do, is make sure to activate people. On different issues. And this year, as you told me, you are uh, exceptionally not in the cast. You're busy uh, behind the scenes and also uh, starting rehearsal with other shows. Mm -hmm. uh, who are the performers uh, this year and uh, what is, uh, if you want to determine uh, a little bit more, define a little bit more what the characters are. I think there's about four or five of mm -hmm. them. Usually it's like kind of like a week close situation and this time uh, it all happens pretty much in the course of one day. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit more about uh, that aspect of the plot, the cast this year. I know Rotimi yeah. Well and mm -hmm. Belina is in, etc. Yeah. But remind people a bit who uh, these uh, very talented actors are as we scroll through some of the uh, production pictures since the show is opening 1st of Soon. July, yeah. preview in uh, the East Bay, yep. and then official San Francisco opening July the 4th. So tell us a little bit more about what we're seeing here. So we have a few uh, uh, veteran actors and one new actor, um, uh, Marilette Martinez, who plays uh, Zania uh, Not Nohatl, who is a, uh, a Mexican immigrant who's come up uh, looking for work because her family has lost their farm due to uh, the drought that has hit, you know, the, the, because of climate change, there's these horrible droughts that are hitting Central and South America and that we don't hear about this enough in this country. They were just starting to experience that. So a lot of the people that are coming up from Mexico, it's because their farms have died, they've dried out, they've been swallowed by deserts and they're trying to find some means to keep, you know, food in their stomach. So she is one of those people, and that's uh, Marilette. She's, this is uh, her first full summer with the Mime Troupe. She had worked with us before as a replacement actor. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's uh, Lizzie Calagero, who is a, a, a Bay Area actor and our newest Mime Troupe collective member. And she plays Klina Ababalog. <laughs> the mm -hmm. Irish immigrant who Here's is uh, Lizzie. She's in yes. the back there uh, in the in the ice uniform, right? right? Yes, and she is the super uh, patriotic. Doesn't want to be Irish anymore. Wants to be American uh, woman who who feels like she she left Ireland behind. There was no place to work. There were no jobs. She couldn't make her living there. She didn't feel, see a future there. So she comes here, mm -hmm. and at the same time, she holds that kind of against any of the new immigrants that are coming in. Mm -hmm. People who are like you know like like uh, Zania's, uh, the Zania character. But she's like super patriotic. Mm -hmm. And then there's Rotomi Ababiaka, who is a Mime Troop member, a uh, long-term Mime Troop member, and uh, this is his third or fourth show with us. And he plays um, Badun Samakab, who is a Somali mm -hmm. uh, uh, immigrant who is, owns a corner store and is trying to do the best he can to get along uh, in a country, like I said, that sees him as a, always as a potential terrorist. Mm -hmm. And he's sending money home to his family, taking care of them as best he can. So he has a lot of responsibility on him. Mm -hmm. And to try to save all the money he can, run his store, and keep under the radar. Uh, and then um, the other actor is Valina Brown, also a long-term Mime Troop member, and my wife, who... Uh -huh. um, she plays uh, Elle Mary Jones, who is an ICE agent, and as I said, she's in a relationship with Zinnia Nuatl, the, the Mexican immigrant. Uh, and she's struggling with, she joined ICE not to tear families apart. She didn't join ICE to, to do raids and pull kids out of school. She joined ICE because she'd just gotten out of the military and it was one of the jobs she could get. And she was sold on the idea of kind of keeping America safe. But what ends up happening is that she's doing a job that, where she's hating herself. Mm -hmm. And so she is struggling with that also. Um, 
Yeah, and so it's really how all four of these characters kind of interact and uh, clash in this one day. So plenty to go by is usually uh, with the Mime Troop shows, lots of music uh, mm -hmm. again, so probably five, six uh, very catchy songs. Uh, is, oh, yeah. uh, who's the composer this year? This year, uh, it's, oh, and I forgot to tell you, and uh, Idris Cooper is a director this year. Mm -hmm. uh, and she's, she, uh, has been, uh, she's a, actually a past Mime Troop member. She'd been with us in like the 80s, mm -hmm. and then had been gone for a long time, and now she's back. Um, our, for the past few years, we've had uh, a wonderful composer lyricist, Ira Marlowe. This year, Ira had to step out, and so uh, Piero Infante, who is a, an amazing lyricist, he was uh, with the uh, was it the Freaky Executives. He's a, 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 a traditional rock and roller band music maker creator from the East Bay. He's, uh, just an amazing political uh, and uh, artistic mind. He's doing the lyrics, and Michael Bello, who has been our uh, uh, kind of pit leader for the last few years is doing the composition so they're working together so it's kind of a new team so they're creating stuff right now I mean we had a meeting today in which it's like okay well this one song it's not quite finished so we're gonna have to go back and write a little bit more of that you know we have a preview mm -hmm. um, tomorrow and uh, before we open so I'm still you know still finishing things up songs are still coming together right I'm still <clears throat> I, I still have to write the very last part of the show, the epilogue, just mm -hmm. to tie everything together with a big, fiery, revolutionary bow ending. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't want to do that until after I've seen the final preview. Right. You know, to make sure that it's what the audience needs and right. the, the audience kind of... I don't want to give the audience exactly what they want. Mm -hmm. That's, I always want to kind of find out what they want and give them a version of it, but something that activates them so that there's still something more to do. One of my big feelings with political theater in particular is that you can't finish the revolution on stage. If you finish the revolution on stage, it doesn't leave anything for the audience mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. I want the audience to get up and go... There's an injustice that something must be done about this. I need to talk to someone. I need to go to meetings. I need to do, uh, give money or time or something. Something to change the world for the better and mm -hmm. not just feel like, well, I did my part because I saw a political show. That is not enough. Mm -hmm. And the writing process with you, since uh, uh, it's not that often that we talk about what goes on in the build up to a show mm -hmm. behind yeah. the scenes. So you mentioned the collective aspect. But how does Michael G. Sullivan work? How do you op uh, operate as a writer, whether it is with or without the Mime Troupe? Because you write your own plays as well. Yeah. Like 1984 was one mm -hmm. that you toured to Spain with, and we can talk about uh, how it's soon opening up uh, in the uh, Eastern Bloc, a former <laughs> Eastern Bloc. Yeah. So uh, give us an insight into your writing process. Well, it is very different. Like with the Mime Troupe um, process, we come together as a group and and discuss different issues and we talk about burning issues. What's the burning issue for somebody this time? Uh, and, and then my job is to kind of go off, take all of those burning issues and sculpt them into a scenario, which then I give to the collective. The collective says, you know, thumbs up, thumbs down. Here's some thoughts, here's some notes. Then I go off and I start working on the script. And then as I'm working on the script, I bring it back to get notes from them. Um, I'm still writing it, but I'm doing it uh, under the artistic director who's giving me uh, some guidance and notes. Mm -hmm. When I'm writing my own stuff, a lot of times it has to do with what I feel is going to be um, kind of the most, the, a question that I don't feel has been ish, uh, dealt with. Uh, there are a lot of Mime Troop shows that I was writing in the early 2000s, and I realized at one point that what I was doing repeatedly was writing versions of George Orwell's 1984, only in Mime Troop version. It was always some different aspect of it. So what I decided to do one day was like, well, I just need to get this out of my, out of my brain. So I read the book, I read all of the plays, versions, I read, uh, I watched the films, I read different things by Orwell. I read the books that Orwell based 1984 on, because there are two other novels written before him that are like 1984, The Iron Heel and uh, We, by uh, a Russian novel. And so I read those, and then I decided to sculpt this show in a way that made sense to me on how I wrote not my adaptation of 1984. And I was fortunate enough that um, just through the vagaries of the universe, Tim Robbins picked the show up, and it opened in 2006 in Los Angeles at the Actors Gang Theater. And then since then, it's been translated. It's in its fourth language now. I went to Barcelona with it to mm -hmm. do the Catalan adaptation, which I wanted to do because Orwell fought on the Catalan front during the Spanish Civil War. It's also in right. Spanish, so I'm trying to get it into Cuba right now. Mm -hmm. And it'll open in Russian in Kiev, 
which is kind of weird because you'd think if it was going to open in Kiev, it'd be opening in Ukrainian, but they specifically want it in Russian. So it'll be opening at this uh, new th uh, a theater that's opening a, a new space. They've got this big, beautiful new theater, comp theater, and they want to open it with 1984. Mm -hmm. So, so that, that's really great. So you're getting recognition way beyond the Bay Area at the, mm -hmm. at the moment as a playwright. Yeah. Uh, and beyond the, the realm of the Comedia dell'arte and the misunderstood uh, as if mime troop <laughs> miming uh, register. So yeah. I, you, you must be pretty excited about that. Well, it's great. I mean, it, 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 I do think about it in terms of how much it helps the mime troupe. Mm -hmm. Because anything I do anywhere else, my show, like 1984 just opened in New Zealand mm -hmm. yesterday. And so that means that in the bio it says San Francisco mime troupe and then parenthetically, not silent mime. Right. So every place that that show plays, every interview I do for any of my stuff, mm -hmm. I always make sure that the mime troupe is mentioned so that we can continue to get our name out as much as possible. Um, and so, and it is great. I mean, I get to travel around and do mm -hmm. things. And, and since I still see myself primarily as an actor, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm also very, like in the Bay Area, I'm an actor. Nationally, right. Right. I'm a playwright. Uh, and that's very odd. And you started uh, with the Mime Troupe in the 90s uh, as an actor? Or how, I started, how does your history uh, I actually, I saw converge? the Mime Troupe originally uh, when I was uh, in high school. Mm -hmm. My father took me to this company. He mm -hmm. said, oh, this might be something you'd be interested mm -hmm. in. Because I hadn't decided what I was going to do with my life. I wanted nice. to be a history teacher. Um, uh, there's worse, uh, there's worse uh, first impressions. So. <laughs> yeah, right. So I, so I saw the troupe and I was like, oh, this is what I want to do. Uh -huh. To be able to work with a theater company, to be able to express myself, to be doing something that impacts people, but it's funny and it's loud mm -hmm. and it's big and it's broad and all of that. And so uh, I auditioned for other theater companies and I was working around the Bay Area. And then I had the opportunity to work for the Mime Troupe um, and uh, I jumped at the chance. Mm -hmm. And so I've been with the Mime Troupe since 1988. I came in as an actor, then I started directing, then I started being a contributing writer, and then I became resident playwright and so I go back and forth between the three jobs mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I'm in shows that I direct no I'm in shows that I write or I direct shows that I write S so far I haven't been in a show that I haven't directed or written in some time um, but it's great to you know it's kind of like being in the mind troops like democracy in action uh, which is great and it also feeds me because when I'm working at other theater companies If you're just the writer or an actor, nobody cares what you think. Right, right. You know? And at this point, I just want to play a, a little clip here uh, that shows That's the what variety I'm about. Yeah. Uh, of what Now is coming up. Good. Uh, so this is a one-minute trailer uh, This is my first walls. Mime Troop show since 1991. What to come to the United States? Uh, to look for a job for what? Zania is an undocumented immigrant from Mexico, and currently in our political climate, um, immigration is a huge issue. We live at a time right now where um, these issues are at the forefront, and we're trying to figure out how do we deal with Islamophobia? How do we deal with the shrinking middle class? Terrorists! This is Fox News. That is what they think of us. And I think Boudin's character enables us to really see those issues and how they affect a regular person. And if you start building walls between yourself and other people and you say, I'm this tribe and you're that tribe, you're just destined for an unpleasant end. Uh, And we are back in the studio. So this was a one-minute trailer. You guys had some uh, friends and family previews uh, mm -hmm. a week or two ago. I suppose that's when this footage and rehearsal footage, of course, uh, building to it, is coming from. Uh, what are the usual favorite parks of Michael Sullivan? Uh, I'm about to show a little bit of the website so people know where to find the information and mm -hmm. catch you in a uh, park in the Bay Area. Where do you prefer playing? Well, all of them have their challenges because we're doing outdoor shows. But, I mean, Dolores Park is great and, and, and just perfect in a lot of ways because there's this nice big bowl where the audience can sit. Uh, the East Bay Parks like Cedar Rose Park and Live Oak are also amazing because they're a little more neighborhoody, but at the same time, it's a very activist crowd. Or, or uh, when we play in Lake Merritt, a very activist crowd. So all of the parks have their, or in Santa Cruz, when we play uh, San Lorenzo Park, you know, every place that we play is remarkably different and the audience is different. Sometimes people will play someone and they'll go, oh, you should play for a more diverse audience. And it's like, come to a different park. If you come to this park, the audience is mainly going to be immigrants. You come to this park, it's mainly going to be, you know, workers. You come here, it's going to be mainly teachers. So each park has its own personality mm -hmm. and its own challenges for us as a performers, but also its own certain kind of love that the audience gives us. 
And here uh, we're showing the, the San Francisco Mime Troop website, so sfmt.org for all things Mime Troop. Uh, be sure to go to that site and look up the schedule and look up the park near you that you can catch the show uh, during the summer. Opens up in July, closes in September, and after that you guys usually uh, tour a little bit or hope to tour. Hope to tour. But uh, absolutely keep your eyes on the prize here. And uh, we'll close the show uh, with uh, a clip that uh, uh, I think I made in 2012, uh, just because it shows the music aspect, the family park uh, extravagant uh, gathering aspect and the, the friendliness of it all. That was uh, 2012, the musical, mm -hmm. and we'll close the show with that. So, Michael, thank you for coming out, presenting the show. Break a leg, have a Thanks. wonderful summer. See you in the parks. And uh, yeah, just uh, give give people one uh, one more uh, you know just one more address, web address, just so they get uh, the point. And yeah. I'll be queuing up the clip. Yeah. So just. Uh www.sfmt.org. You can see the history of the company. I said the company's been around for almost 60 years and all the rabble rousing that we've done and how to enthusiastically get people out there and overthrow capitalism one musical comedy at a time. And here we go with 2012. And I'll take advantage of this to uh, remind people that the show start at 2 mm -hmm. and that there's always a musical entertainment before that at 1.30. Yeah. So yes. that's why this show, uh, this clip here uh, is relevant, reminding us of that. Be on time. And that was it for our show. We'll see you next time. Signing off. <laughs>